Hello friends, my name is Beth Korth and I'm the Art Education Coordinator and Visitor Center Manager here at Tippett Rise Art Center, located in Fishtail, Montana. And I'm here today in Daydreams, a sculpture built by artist Patrick Doherty. And so aptly named um, a schoolhouse is where we're inside today, where I'm going to be presenting our Fam at the Yam event. So without further ado, um, you viewers at home may have already picked up your yam um, little sack lunch art kit from us. But if you have not, there's some materials listed and you can do this um, project anytime at your will. But we'll go ahead. Today we're going to be making embossed clay ornaments um, using natural materials to emboss into our clay. And then if you'd like later, you can decorate with watercolors or acrylic paint. But for now, let's get started. You, so you're going to need your kit, of course. But even before that, you might want to go out and collect some natural items. So today I actually went out and I got a few of these beautiful big leaves and some uh, beautiful lambs here. I was really looking for objects that were kind of flat um, but had nice, beautiful textures. I was really drawn to a lot of these different size and, and textural leaf styles. Um, besides some of your natural materials, and you could grab things like feathers, um, even some things from the fridge, you could grab um, you know, different veggies and stuff, slice them up, see how those print. I'm going to show you a few ways you can print some different objects. And then you might also want just a little bit of water as well as um, your watercolors ready to go if you'd like to decorate later. If you don't, this type of um, air dry clay will just stay white, which can be beautiful as well. So let's go into our kit. You're going to find some twine. This will be for the final stages. So we'll get to that a little bit later. You're also going to find your clay. There's one single bag of, this is Crayola air dry clay. So you want to make sure that it's nice, sealed tightly before you get ready to use it because it does start to dry immediately once the seal is broken. And then you're also going to find um, some included lentils and some home beans, some nice dry goods. Just a little example of some things that you can emboss with and also decorate with. And then last but not least, you'll find your very own Tippet Rise Art Center sticker, which you're welcome to use in, at home and enjoy. A little gift from us. So now you can just set that aside. Perfect. All right, so first things first, you might want to lay out a nice clean area with your materials nearby in that water. And I'm going to set this aside as well. And you might want to put some plastic down or some sort of protective over your table um, just to keep things nice and clean. As you break that seal into your clay, pull it out there and set that aside. And your clay is going to have been in the bag for a little bit while, so it's going to need a little warming up. Great way to do that is just to smush between each hand. You can also set it on the table, give it a smush down, peel it up, push it down. You're going to start to feel it soften up a little. If you find that your clay at home is still um, very hard or firm, you can always add just a little bit of water just to the body of the clay and just start to work that in. Just go little at a time. Because this is air dry clay, it has a lot, it's, it's very porous. So as it takes in water, those pores get further and further apart um, and open up and it'll actually disintegrate this clay. That's how come when it dries in the air, it becomes hard and doesn't need uh, heat to uh, set and dry it. So definitely make sure that you're not adding too much water because that can make it really slimy and start to break down. So you want a nice sort of medium texture where it feels a little sticky, but as you release, you just see your, your handprint in the clay and not too much on your hands. So as we take time for that, this is feeling pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is just start to sort of pancake it, sort of clasping it nice and flat in my palm, making a sort of fat little disc here. And now I'm going to set it down and start to press it out with my hand. You could even get up and get both hands, put a nice amount of pressure on there. 
and start to flatten it out to the way you want it. You don't want to make it so thin. This is a pretty good thickness because the thinner you make it, the more fragile it's going to be once it dries. The thicker it is, the more it's going to have a little bit more beef to it and hold up. Now, depending on how much clay you have, you could make a fairly large disc ornament or you could make multiple ornaments. You could break this clay up into maybe two slabs and work one at a time, smooshing into a smaller amount of clay and then smooshing that down. And it doesn't have to be disc shaped either. You can definitely grab um, a butter knife or you know, a nice sort of thin blunt object and you could cut these edges, excuse me, and trim them so that they're specifically how you'd like them. Or you can kind of leave that sort of natural, deckled, um, you know, non-purposeful look. It's kind of nice too. If you find that you have lots of little crackles and texture in your clay, you again just take a little, just a little bit of water to get your fingers wet and you can sort of just smooth that over on your clay surface. And that can start to do that. Again, not too much water because that's really going to make your clay a little bit more difficult to manage. So I think for now, because it's air dry clay, I want to put this half back away. So I'm going to stick it back in my little bag here. Seal it up good. That way I can use that later to make a second disc if I'd like or something different. So we're going to be working with something a little bit this size. And you might be working with something a little bit different, but um, I think it's all going to end up pretty similar. So first thing you want to do is actually establish where that hole's going to be. Um, it's nice to know where that is from the get-go. That way we can work our design that we're going to put it around it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just take my brush that I have for my watercolor kit and just go ahead and pierce the clay uh, sort of near the top but not so close to the edge because this is still pretty fragile and it will remain fragile even when it dries. You know, it will be immobile, you know, you won't be able to smush it back, but it still be able to break. It sort of has a fragileness like glass. And that's going to be a nice set. I just want to make sure it's not going to shrink at all, like, um, like what you see with clay that goes in a kiln. It actually is going to stick to this size pretty true to itself. Um, so I just want to make sure that my hole is large enough to fit my twine through um, once I'm all said and done. So again, so once you have that, you can set your little clay disc down. And this is the fun part. This is when we get to start decorating. So I'm going to get out some of my lentils and dry goods that was in the kit. And then also some of my leaves and materials I collected from outside. And it's very simple. Um, take something like a leaf. And as you'll notice on uh, most leaves, there's one side that's pretty flat and doesn't have a lot of texture. And then on the opposite side, that's where those veins are raised against your finger. You can kind of feel that texture. And that's the side that we want to press into the clay. That's going to give us the most texture relief and indentation to make our decoration um, come true. So I'm just going to go ahead and set my leaf exactly how I want it to appear on my clay disc. And I'm going to hold it straight onto the table here. And as I'm pressing, I'm just pressing down gently. I'm not trying to like shove it in there all the way. It just takes a little bit. Just kind of make sure everything feels like it's made a connection with the clay body. And then just from the stem is a nice spot. And I can just, here I can show you guys better too. I can just start to relief, oh, lift my leaf up and make that nice slight indentation um, and that replicate of that leaf right in the clay. So this one, it's, it's pretty light. It's probably a little bit difficult to see. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I like, I like that it's a little lighter though. So I'm going to take a different leaf body. How about one of these guys? It's a great little aspen leaf. And I'm going to set that on a different part of my clay body. And I'm going to, again, just gently make that connection with the clay. Press everywhere around the leaf. There we go. And then uh, gently try and grab that little stem. I can show you guys again. And pull away. I've got that great little edge of the aspen leaf you can see really well. That stem indented really beautifully. So here's um, some things we can do. It sort of starts to fill up fast, especially if you do sort of a smaller ornament um, amount versus something much larger. And again, you have enough clay, you're welcome to try both. Um, really quickly, I'm just gonna re-smudge this because if you make a mistake or you don't like what you did, it's really easy just to start over. This clay does really well um, with re-squishing until you're ready for it to um, harden and be, be what it is. So I think you'll, you'll definitely have a few redos available within each clay packet. So I'm just going to go ahead, same thing, make my little disc here by smushing it down on the table. And I'm going to go through some of those steps we talked about earlier again. Um, might add a little bit of water. There's a little cracking because the longer your clay is out, the longer and more opportunities it has to dry. You want to be careful of that. All right, so I like this sort of deckled rough edge. Again, I'm going to pierce it with the end of my paintbrush. Make a hole that's big enough for my twine or string. And if you don't want to hang it up with twine string, you can skip this part. Or you can make um, negative space holes in it for the decoration component. Pretty endless. All right. So now I'd like to try a different texture. This leaf is really soft, but it still has these raised veins. So I think I want to try this one out. So I'm going to lay it down here. Ooh, it is soft. I'm going to press it directly to my clay body. Again, not too hard. I'm not trying to make sure it sticks to the clay forever, but I, I want to feel that all, every part of the leaf touch the clay body and kind of smoosh into it, like when you lay on a couch or a bed. All right, and then my stem is hanging off the edge, so it's very easy to grab and lift up, and that makes a very different texture. You can really see those vein bodies, but you can see all the little fuzziness of the leaf as well. So I really like that. I think I'm gonna stick with that one. That's the one I really like. I'm not gonna redo it again. And now, thinking about what I have left, so I've sort of filled up this amount of space with my leaf, and I really like it, but I've got this negative space, this untouched space over here. And, you know, I could do a lot of different things, but I could paint it a color, I could put textures in it um, using my paintbrush again. But I think I really want to use these nice, bright, beautiful lentils. And so what I'm going to do with those is start to gather them up. There's lots of different sizes and textures. And I think what I'm going to do with those is actually stick those into the clay. And this time I am going to press them so that they're embedded into my clay. And because it's air dry clay, I'm not going to bake it. Um, and the lentils aren't going to get so wet that they become soft or sprout or anything like that. So they're actually just going to embed as a little extra texture. So I've been grabbing all these dark lentils, but I should grab, I don't know, some of these little green guys. And I'm just sort of going to deckle them in there to make a different little texture, different from the clay, different from the leaf and print. Now, if I wanted to, I could definitely press these in and carefully remove them 
and that's going to make a little bean shaped embossment in my clay, which is also a great texture, great thing to play with. But I, I like the idea of maybe just sticking them in there to stay. Okay. All right. So here is my completed decorated uh, little embossed ornament using natural materials like my big leaf print, that, which is a relief of the leaf, and then uh, my little embedded beans, making a little texture and color into the side there. And so what I can do, there's a couple of different options. I can set this in a nice, oh, excuse me, in a nice um, clean and dry, warm environment. Inside is best than outside. Um, a lot of the moisture from the outdoors will actually keep it saturated, so it'll take longer to dry out. So it's nice in a window seal, um, somewhere that's nice, dry, and warm, and this will take about 24 hours to completely dry. Um, so you can always take your time, let these dry, and then you, you're welcome to add um, acrylic paint works really well, watercolor works really well. Just keep in mind, you can still reactivate um, the, with the wetness, the surface. So you don't wanna like stick these in a cup of water. You don't wanna use so much paint and watercolor that it actually starts to break down the clay. These are still pretty fragile, um, but as long as you're keeping it nice and dry and not using too much paint when you go back to decorate, they should be just fine. Um, another thing you can do and you're going to get some different results is you can go ahead and actually paint your surface now. So I want to do a little bit of that now just to show you guys some of the cool stuff that can happen with your watercolor. So again, you might want to grab a paintbrush. I'm just going to stable and grab some little bit of water. I'm going to go ahead. I know my leaf was green, but I think I want my ornament to be bit more brighter and exciting than that. So we're grabbing our yellow paint and I would di dip it into the water one more time. It's really loaded with water and paint and just gently touch the surface of your ornament and you're going to see that spread. It already naturally wants to spread that water and that pigment out which makes watercolors really ideal I think over acrylics. Uh, for going back to decorating because you can really just touch it with water and that water is going to go into each of those little crevices and part of that surface and spread itself because um, that clay is really great at spreading those water molecules around and so just I'm barely touching it. It's so gentle that way my, especially because it's still wet. I don't want to jam my paintbrush at it because that's going to create a texture, so you could, but it's going to create a texture into the into the body of your clay. So if you want to avoid that, then I would I would just be very very gentle. I'm going to go in. I'm going to kind of. It's a nice autumn day, so I'm going to kind of go in with these autumn vibes. And as you're adding layers of paint, just keep in mind that it is going to dry a little less bright than it goes on, just like any watercolor. So. You might also want to paint in layers so that you can get more of that brightness out later. So just really go ahead and add a lot of pigment if you'd like because it's definitely going to dull out a little bit, but you can always go back, repaint some more on top, and those layers are really going to help bring out a lot of the brightness of your pigment. And it's, it's going to stop with that line where your embossment is. It sort of creates this natural little dam or um, barrier between the rest of the clay body. So even though it wants to spread out, it is going to hit those embossed spaces and make this nice sharp line, which can be great because it can re-emphasize the edge of your leaf that you, you embossed. And then let's go, let's go a little different on the outside. It's still, still some blue, beautiful skies we're holding on to for now and just around my beans. You can see because my beans are um, a material that has um, a protective sort of glassy shell, that watercolor isn't gonna paint my beans. 
Um, so, you know, they're going to stay that color that they are. So I could paint right over them and not be worried about changing that color. And bring in some blue again, but that little space where it, in the beads, beans embedded in and pull down the clay, that's going to um, capture some extra pigment. Yeah. So we'll do this last little side here for fun. Right like that. So take your time decorating. Um, you do have a lot of time. Like I said, you can continue decorating as it dries, of course, as you're adding um, wet materials onto it, like paint. It's not going to dry as fast. So you will have to give it breathing time, but you're not in a rush to get that painting done. You could even do just a little bit while it's wet, let it dry completely again in a nice dry area and bring it back the next day and paint some more onto it. You can do layers onto it. Um, but for now we're going to leave, I'm going to leave my little ornament right at this level, which I was pretty excited about. I think it's a cool little combination of these beautiful natural objects, some dried goods from our, from our pantry here, and then this great clay body. So bring it all together. We can hang it up. You could even let it dry and do the back afterwards if you'd like. Um, emboss, well, you can't emboss more once it's dry, but you can always paint a little bit more on it. And then of course, the last step will just be putting your twine through the hole and tying it off. That way you could hang it somewhere in a window. Um, I'd recommend definitely indoor use. Cause like I said, if it gets out on the rain or gets too much water on it, it is going to still break down as it's clay body, but it's a cool, it's a cool little material to try out capture some of this beautiful fall leafage and, and environment that we're in and take it with you and share it. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys for this fam at the yam, but I'm so glad that you were able to tune in, hang out with us. We do have more art educational videos on our YouTube channel at Tippet Rise. You can also check out um, any other information about the Tippet Rise Art Center at www.tippetrise.org. Thank you.